So what is a belief? So Abraham Hicks says that a belief is just a thought that you keep thinking. And that's a really good definition of it. But to kind of like combine that with a lot of there's no you <laughs> realizations, you can go really far with this. So a belief is a misunderstanding. And we often have very specific thoughts that stem from this mis misunderstanding, almost like a tree branch kind of like stems out and comes back from the um, the base of the tree. So you have to like chase them out. So the individual thoughts which we experience, we're interested in conceptually kind of like chasing them out to their root. Now, of course, it's important to note that a belief is another, is just another thought, just like the thought that you have a mind or you have a brain is in our direct experience, which is what we're interested in, just another thought. But the belief is so much more of a, a sticky thing. It's like we, we don't, we aren't conscious of why we get mad at this particular person or mad at this traffic situation. We have that thought. But what is behind it? What is the belief behind it that's causing that feeling? If we just look at the specific thought, we're likely to think that it's just that situation. But as we kind of like use this looking at beliefs as a tool to chase it back to some of the assumptions that we made about ourselves and this identification ultimately the identification we've made with ourselves that was not correct and so rather than having morals and having good and bad and rather giving the mind like trying to give the mind which mind can't actually control this and that's why it's so <laughs> restless all the time the poor thing really i mean we should feel bad for it instead of giving it the control of trying to figure out what's right and wrong we're simply going back to feeling and i could cry that truth is love and truth is love I actually use this as a teenager. I use this as a computer password. And I can tell you that because they don't let me use passwords without numbers and special characters anymore. But really, that is the password. Truth is love. The two things <laughs> together. And like I somehow inherently knew that, but it it's funny how as I get deeper into this, it feels like at the start, <laughs> I was giving this this puzzle with a whole ton of pieces and I put the edge together because everyone puts the edges together first. You're just you're just dumb if you don't do it that way. Sorry if you do it that way. And then it's really hard after you get the edges together. It's really hard to find out where the other pieces go. And then as you as the puzzle gets going, you get momentum and then all of a sudden you're getting pieces everywhere. That's what it feels like now. It feels like it's coming together so fast that it's just like, oh, another piece, another piece, another piece. Whereas at the start, it was like, I got one piece and I was like, yes. <laughs> and some of the insights like this feel that way. Is it kind of, is it all comes together and you sort of see it all come together? It's still amazing, but it's, it's less of a it's you're you're noticing less of a difference of back and forth a bunch of a difference between this long angst of searching and then finally finding something that fits instead it's just this continual like noticing and seeing where things fit but of course the ultimate belief is the i there's something behind this belief behind there's this sense that there's, and that the tension is ultimately in the creation of time and space. And so a lot of teachings tell you that, but what's the purpose of time and space? I feel like it's really important to tell people what's the purpose. It's creation. It's, it's art. It's beauty. That's what the, it's love. That's what it is. It's the, the depth. <laughs> 
we're going so deep in these teachings, we're learning that there's really no depth whatsoever. There's just this complete, we can't even call it surface. There's nothing, there's no distance for us to have any depth. But depth is beautiful. And having this manifestation, having other people, having all these, having a belief that there are other people, then you can use spirituality to have the belief that there are not other people. But really, truth is love. And every time you're thinking a thought, you're feeling at the same time. And your awareness, there's in, in your now, <laughs> these perceptions, these sensations are all happening now. In fact, there's like so much happening, you can't even process it. And your mind is creating time and space in order to process it, in order to know what's going on. And so as we align the mind with the true identity of what we are, with consciousness, awareness, love, whatever you want to call it, when we align with that, we truly see things as they are. And we're free to create in a way that doesn't just color over things. And so I kind of came up with this sad analogy to explain this, but a lot of us were kind of given the wrong beliefs to work with in life, and some of them we inferred, but we took them upon ourselves. But it wasn't completely our fault, so you can't blame yourself, you can't blame others. <laughs> you have to sort of look at this all, all with this eye of the story of love. And really, like, any good author starts their character out in some sort of place of lack, so there can be some development. But it's as if you were a kid, and you were given your first art supplies, and you are given your first, like, watercolor palette with all the colors. And you didn't have a very good teacher. Instead of a teacher that taught you, like, how to mix the colors and what colors mixed other colors and how to use the paintbrush and just general techniques, they taught you some techniques, but they also shared with you their bias of which colors they liked and which they didn't. And so you spent all this time creating these paintings, trying to please them. Um, and at the same time, having this great resonance with colors that you truly liked, but they didn't, and trying to avoid them so you could please them. And so you didn't enjoy creating art anymore. <laughs> this, is a, this is a suffering. This is, this is a, our life, the gift we've been given, and kind of taking it back as knowing that it's a creation and taking back our own true resonance with the colors with being able to express and just like white light just like the one separates itself into all the colors all the colors are inherently one in themselves duality and non-duality are the same thing and truth is love and so this is how we go about life and this is how we go about chasing out our beliefs and kind of seeing through it at the same time and it helps to listen to certain teachings that point out to you things that there is no self, that there are <laughs> no other people really outside of your own thoughts, perceptions, judgments about them. Um, but when we really interact with people, we, <laughs> we, all, we truly, when we go in this direction of truth is love, we gain this ability to truly interact with people in unique, incredible ways that sort of like bring out the individuality in this beautiful creation, creative expression. And so you can't leave creativity out of non-duality. And at first, when we start to cut through those mind patterns that say, I don't like this person, this person did this to me, we go directly into the present moment or meditation, we drop the thoughts. Um, but when you have, the key is to have that resonance and to realize that you're not seeing things clearly until you feel the real resonance. And so waiting until you have that to, to start thinking things and to start believing them is, is 
truth is love. That's the way. And it's, I read something this in a Rupert Spira book the other day that really hit me. And he said, we can't remember happiness. We can't remember love. And I had never thought of it that way before. And, but he's right. You feel it now. But what we do remember is the specific objects or the specific events of something that like proceeded or was close to that time. And so then we search for it then. And so it's when we realize that our awareness is the truth, is the true knowing and the allowing, the unconditional allowing of everything to be and the true love that we're seeking for, then we can go out and create knowing that everything we create is just an expression of us.